I am Xavier Carcel. Uh, I am the hardware manager for Avenco. Uh, Avenco is a French Canadian voice over IP company. And the idea is today to cover in the next uh, 20 to 30 minutes uh, what Xivo software is doing. So basically, I will try to do a review about uh, all the software features and, uh, and leave some, uh, some space for questions after that. So uh, some, the outline, just introduction, brief history of the project. Uh, and then I will review, like I said, uh, the features that we have currently in Xivo solutions. Uh, we try to make this project uh, as much community oriented as we can. So we try to uh, document and publish as much as we can on the project, not only the source code, but also the organization of the project, the test, uh, the decision making process. And I will try to give you uh, hints about that and information. Um, also, I just wanted to be uh, explicit about the development process that we're using uh, currently in the software team, uh, roadmap and conclusions. So, uh, Again, I'm uh, Xavier Carcel. I'm the hardware uh, lead engineer. So uh, specifically, I'm not the software uh, leader. So I might be uh, out of resources on some specific questions on the software. But I have people in the room that can help me. Um, Xivo, just the name, story of the name is an anagram with the word voice, V-O-I-X, which is uh, voice in French. And we started the project in 2005 using Asterix 1.2. In, uh, in French, and now we have branches in France and Canada, Quebec City, um, doing R&D in the two countries. Uh, this is a complete GPL v3 solutions um, that we provide as a distribution. So you can download the ISO and just uh, test the ISO functionality or Debian package. Uh, French people tend to like Debian as a distribution, so we have packages uh, Xivo for Debian. This is a software and hardware solutions, um, and we package everything, and we can uh, either propose services uh, along with the software or sell the full solutions with the software installed on our uh, own hardware. So, <coughs> the solutions. Um, so basically, at the bottom, of course, we need to use hardware. So we have a different size of hardware from the small businesses to the large uh, ones. Uh, as we speak, the largest installation we have uh, in France is uh, 1,200 phones or users. And on this one, we use the Xivo Corporate, which is the large appliance that we uh, carry. Uh, on top of that, we will have the packages uh, the Debian distributions, then Asterisk as the cool uh, engine. We are currently using 1.8 and moving slowly to uh, 11 and 12. And on top of that, uh, Xivo, which is different components. Uh, so it's a web server, it's a CTI server, and client platform to interact with the server on different platforms. Um, just a small uh, reminder on the hardware, uh, as, uh, as the hardware uh, manager, you might have been visiting our booth on booth 28, uh, and maybe last year you showed my presentation about one platform that we developed for small businesses called the Xivo IPBX Open Hardware. Uh, this picture shows the, the, full, uh, the final uh, version of the, the platform, the, appli the appliance. And to go very quickly, that's two analog port, FXOFXS, four BRI, and three Ethernet platform based on an x 66 platform from Intel. Um, we tend to like open sourcing everything, so as long as the, uh, for the software, we will publish in a couple of days all the schematics and information about the hardware because we would like to make a community around this platform and uh, potentially uh, be an open hardware platform for IPBX solutions. So don't hesitate to uh, come to me uh, later if you have any questions about that. For the rest of the, uh, the hardware, we use existing industrial PC that we assemble and install our software on top of that. So just uh, complete solutions. 
Excuse my uh, slides, they are uh, including some uh, French words um, like this one slide. Uh, so basically you see the full set of, uh, of features that we support. Uh, nothing cutting edge, the classical features that you can find in IPBX, we try to support them. And we have customized some part of the, the features to, uh, to handle uh, features that are needed by our customers. Um, currently, we are using uh, Redmine as a project management tool that is uh, available for external uh, people. So you can follow the uh, customer-driven development that we are doing. And uh, some customers are using it to, uh, to add bugs or to uh, send us some questions about uh, some features they would like to have. So the, the ecosystem of the project, basically, we support a certain number of uh, IP phones, uh, including Cisco. Uh, I will come back to that later, because we had developed our own channel SCP channel for asterisk. Um, to support that number of phones, we have a provisioning system that, is, uh, that has been uh, um, improved to, uh, to let get in provisioning easy, we support some phones, we have clients for specific platforms to uh, interact with our server, and uh, we support a certain number of uh, PCI cards, and also our uh, own platform. So, just interoperability with other applications uh, that, you, uh, that you know, so we are uh, interacting with different, uh, different tools from uh, web applications, uh, voice recognition, uh, directory in a corporate uh, environment. So that's all the tools that we natively interact with into the Xivo software. This slide, I hope you can read all the lines. Uh, this is kind of uh, blue on gray on black, so sometimes it doesn't uh, show up very well. Uh, so you can, you can see basically all the components that we are using. You see asterisk on the, on the bottom, connecting in SIP, and then you have different components, including the CTI server that we will connect to. Um, we use AGI and MI to interact with the asterisk server. And then um, on different platform, we can have the client that interacts with this server. So this, all these components uh, interact together to make the Xivo solutions. This, uh, this list, uh, just to give you uh, a total number of features, again, this is not uh, something new. Um, I will try to go through a certain number of features that we uh, currently have. Um, classical features, advanced features for, uh, for uh, call center, for instance. And maybe I can put the raise on two features that we uh, have been developing, which is the auto-provisioning of phones. We made it easier by uh, giving uh, basically a dialing number to provision any kind of phones. So you reset a phone, and then you create this phone uh, on the web server, and by dialing a certain number that is allocated on the web server, you provision this phone. Uh, and also the skill-based routing, I will come back to that later, that is used in call center. So basically a calls in, uh, can be redirect in the call center by using uh, skill-based routing on the people calling in and the people agents uh, taking care of this, uh, this system. So the first administrative features. Um, so some, some screenshots of the, of the tool. Uh, again, sorry, some screenshots are in French. We do support uh, other languages. Uh, you will see other features, other screenshots in, Fran in other languages. Currently, we support, I think, five languages, uh, of course, including English. So the, the administrative features uh, on the web server, when you connect, you have on the left panel uh, a certain number of uh, features that you can use to administrate that. And on the bottom, uh, you can see that you can add hooks to external scripts that can uh, help people to add uh, hooks to, uh, to their applications or to uh, add some scripts on the IPBX if they wish. That is available as a, as a function on the web interface. 
We have also supervision features. Again, something uh, classical for an IPBX. We just want to be able, from the web server, to interact with the IPBX hardware and to monitor the hard drive, the CPU usage, and so on. So you have a specific page on the web interface that sum up all the information about the IPBX. Uh, in terms of uh, advanced features, the last line on our own hardware, we had some temperature features uh, sensors that we can retrieve in the interface to try to prevent some, uh, some uh, outage or some uh, phenomenon of uh, temperature uh, raise on the hardware. Uh, that's only on our hardware, but that's something that you can uh, find in the interface, and maybe you can uh, pull that information from uh, Nagios or any SNMP server if you wish to monitor the temperature of our CPU or of the appliance in case of uh, harsh environments. The Xivo client, so I was talking about the server. Uh, those are uh, some screenshots. So you can install the client on Mac, Windows, or uh, Linux platform. And once you have that, you basically interact real time with the server. And based on your uh, privileges or uh, profile, you can uh, basically see a vision of the IPBX, administrate, control, and you can also uh, do uh, drag and drop functions, like on the top right uh, part. You can see basically all the people logged are registered on the IPBX, and if you want to transfer a call, you basically go on the, on the interface and just drag and drop uh, a number and you can, uh, you can transfer the call. Um, <coughs> you can also information about the, the queues, uh, your voicemail, and so on. So that's something that are useful from the client side. Uh, we have an Android uh, client uh, now, so you can also use that platform, mobile platform, to interact with the server. And we are working on an iPhone uh, client also. Uh, more administrative features. So uh, again, something classical. Uh, you, can, uh, you can use a certain uh, interaction with mail server. And for instance, if you receive a voicemail, uh, you, can, uh, you can forward this to your email box and uh, read the voice message that you receive. Um, along with all the information uh, related to that. Uh, also, fax to mail. Uh, we support fax to mail, so you can uh, receive the fax in your email box. Uh, so Xivo and the call centers, we have been, uh, the last two years, uh, having more and more customers, uh, call center customers, mainly in, in France. So we have been extending our features to support and to help the call centers. Uh, so we try to uh, support all the call center's requirements. And as I say, we add more and more uh, features to that. In the queue management, uh, we have been developing a custom skill-based routing uh, branch. This is not included into uh, asterisk trunk. So this is a specific branch that we support uh, ourselves. And that helps us to route the call based on some profiles or skills that the calls uh, uh, holds. Uh, agent management, real-time and consolidated statistics. That was a requirement from uh, different customers. So they wanted to have real-time uh, statistics on the calls, on the queues, and uh, consolidated statistics on one week, one month, one year. Um, we have the, on the CTI client, so on the client side, we have what we call a pop-up that can uh, basically in real-time gives you information on the call center. Uh, and we have possible connection with specific business tools. If one call center is working in a specific branch or specific uh, business, they might have specific tools. Uh, and we have an API that allows these uh, guys to interact and connect with our uh, CTI uh, server. So this very heavy uh, slide, <laughs> I was trying to beat the contest of the heavier uh, slide. Just the routing process when a call arrives in the queue for uh, a call center. So uh, basically there is eight steps. Uh, the calls gets in. There is scripts to uh, analyze the call. 
the course goes in some queues uh, based on some uh, requirements, and then we will recognize the incoming call, and from this call, from this caller ID, if this caller ID registered in our database, we should be able to pop up information on that user and being able to transfer the call to the agent taking care of that, uh, that call so that when the agent receives the call or treat the call, uh, he will get all the user's information right away. We, uh, we have been using that along with callbacks functions. So we have one of our customers that, uh, that is using callback. So basically, if you have uh, specific applications on your, uh, on your phone, you require a callback from your uh, provider, insurance, or uh, of whatever. These applications will send an alarm to the, the provider, and the provider will retrieve pop-up information and only call you back when the agent is linked with the user information to make a useful call. The queue management uh, of the desk. So if you are, sorry, if you are logged, uh, for instance, at the administration, administrator of the queue, uh, you will be able to see in real time the situation of the queue. Um, and you can be able to uh, see how many number of uh, calls are waiting, transfer that call, uh, manage the transfer to specific agents um, on your desk from this client. So we have uh, real-time supervision uh, features. Again, uh, you, can, you can see how many people are in the queues, how many people are waiting, and you can also uh, set up thresholds, meaning that in case of uh, too many waiting calls, you can go in orange level or red level and to treat that kind of uh, threshold uh, according to your uh, specifications. Um, we, um, so we do that in this interface. That, again, doesn't look the same if you, are, if you have specific privileges on the IPBX. Okay. Now that you have your call center running, IPBX running, you want to make statistics, and we have uh, developed a, a predefined report in HTML format statistics tool. So you will be able to, uh, to get some statistics, retrieve them monthly, yearly, weekly, daily, and we can drill down, for instance, statistics that you are looking for the next month or next year, and you want to drill down and go into the statistics for that period of time. So that's available, and you can also export that in CVS format. That's something that is available on the server, so you can just go on the web interface and retrieve that information, or you can download, export that, and treat that on a specific statistics tools if you wish. So again, the supervision for the, the queues, uh, you see some screenshot of that. Um, a requirement that we had from members of uh, customers was to uh, try to support Cisco phones. Uh, people that have bought Cisco phones tend to like to keep them. Uh, they are uh, usually, uh, there are a number of features, they, are, they were maybe uh, costly, and they want to keep them. So we decided to implement a specific SCCP skinny channel for our uh, asterisk version. And so what we did, uh, Nicola Boulian, who is there in, in the room, uh, is responsible for that channel. So basically developed from scratch a specific channel, SSP channel. Um, we were using before uh, another library, and we decided that due to uh, so much deadlocks and uh, and problems with that, we're gonna implement ourselves. Uh, so we support a specific number of Cisco phones now, and um, the number is increasing, and we currently have 13 features supported, and seven upcoming uh, in the pipe to support more of that. So basically in the interface, uh, you have a menu configuration provisioning plugins where you can see, uh, where you can add the support for SCCP, and if you plug any SCCP phones on your uh, network, they will be available as a new device on the interface appearing there. And then you can treat that phone, provision that phone, associate that phone to a user or to a device, and manipulate that phone, uh, that Cisco phone, as you wish. So, so you see that uh, 
that uh, screenshot that shows that in terms of, uh, of administration of this uh, China CCP, uh, this is supported in asterisk 1.8. There is a specific branch on our Git if you wanna, if you wanna look at it and also participate if you want to add more uh, features to that. Um, there is, Nicola implemented the SCCPP uh, part, which can do traffic generation and emulation of phones, which is useful to, uh, for our test suite. Uh, also to, to do gen generation of traffic. Uh, concerning the devices, so you can see them in service IPBX uh, uh, settings, devices appearing once they appear on your uh, Ethernet local network. Sorry, I think I have some problem with my slides. So I will talk about it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, concerning the development process, we currently have, uh, we are using Agile and Scrum uh, method. So the idea is to have a two weeks iteration for each version, so every two weeks we implement a new version and we publish that. Uh, this two weeks time frame is usually used as a, a, a startup, uh, a kickoff planning. Then we have about 10 days of development and then we have a one to two days of tests to be able to publish that. Uh, on the test suite, we are using Jenkins with automated uh, tested that will uh, run all the tests and and if they are passing that, we can, we can publish that and uh, do, uh, we have an automatic building form that will make all the packages and the ISO available on our uh, downloads uh, websites. I'll try to see if I can pop up the PDF version. Sorry about that. Uh, looks like my uh, PDF is also uh, messed up. Uh, so I will, I will try to give you a list afterwards, if you wish, of the, of the URL we have. Um, just my last slide before concluding was to talk about... So basically the idea of the, the projects I wanted to say in the development process is to be as open as we can. So we have a documentation platform web, so documentation.xivo.fr. You can follow all the documentations. We have a git, git.xivo.fr. We have a download website, downloads.xivo.fr, and so on. Uh, this map represents the current, the, the situation a couple of months ago of the downloads of the ISO we have. So we definitely see that the, the community around Xivo is expanding. We are willing to uh, to have more people in the community, and not only we have community in France and Europe now, but we see people downloading our ISO, uh, 10 to 20 downloads each day now. So the community is expanding uh, rapidly now, and that's just uh, a small uh, world map of the downloads that we had a couple of months ago. And uh, I think I'll thank you very much for, for your time, and uh, I'll leave some rooms for questions. Do you have any questions? Yes? How different is the SCCP format and the rust from the one that you installed a year ago and the new one? So the question is uh, how much the SCCP channel we developed is different from the, the skinny ones that is available for with asterisk? Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe you can talk afterwards with Nicola, who is in charge of this this channel? 
Do you have other questions? I remain available after the talk if you wish. And I thank you very much for your time. Thank you.